is really about electability here, and that's what I'm trying to get at. You, the, the, the Republican attack act against you in a general election, it writes itself. You supported the Sandinistas in Nicaragua, you honeymooned in the Soviet Union, and just this weekend you said you're not a capitalist. Doesn't, doesn't that ad write itself? <laughs> Play the, wait, this is good. No, I was surprised Cooper did a very good job on the commie. But if you look carefully, he was supposed to. Sanders was put there like a lightning rod to take the heat away from Hillary. Don't you get it? Now, imagine that debate last night without uh, Sanders. Then all of this left-wing stuff would have come out of her. You'll get it? So they they attack him because he's the, he's the target. So let's hear how uh, uh, Senator... Larry David answers in clip 19. Well, first of all, let's look at the facts. Uh, the facts that are very simple. Republicans win when there is a low voter turnout, and that is what happened last November. No, let, notice he's not answering 63. the question about... Uh, shut up. Shut up. Go have a pickle somewhere, you loser. Cooper said you supported the Sandinistas in Nicaragua. You honeymoon in the Soviet Union. Okay. He said he's not a capitalist, and now he's attacking Republicans. This is who he is. This is what these people are, demagogues. Demagogues. Could you imagine who, if God forbid there was a fluke in America somehow, that they imported enough illegal aliens into the country just in time for the election, uh, if they could do that, and they're working as fast as they can to make sure that they're certified illegal voters to become legal. Jerry Brown just made the, the Department of Mexican Voting Act here in the state of California. And so they could bring in, let's say, 20 million to make sure that all of the uh, working people in America's vote don't count. And that Sanders became president. What would he and his wife do with the portraits in the White House? That's what I like to know. Who would they replace them? Well, it's obvious to me that any por portrait of any of the founding fathers would be taken out of the White House and thrown into a fire. There'd be a bonfire on the on the White House lawn, and obviously there'd be p portraits of uh, who who are any is a tough question. Mao Zedong to show cultural diversity, Pol Pot to show cultural diversity, uh, and forget about removing the bust of Winston Churchill. De Blasio just removed the portrait of George Washington in New York. You imagine what this nutcase would put up there. Probably Emma Goldman. I would say there'd be a portrait of Emma Goldman in the White House, if not a statue of Emma Goldman. They'd have, a melt, they'd have to melt down probably you know, two metric tons of bronze to do with life size and uh, in, re in real. But Emma Goldman would be on the thing, uh, and uh, you could just name it. 855-407-282 is the phone, phone number. There's a few other sound bites I want to get to with not just Sanders. I mean, he's a laugh line. We'll use him for, from, from now until he's still in the race. Cooper then calls out Hillary Clinton on being part of the 1%. In clip 20, listen to how she lies her way out of it in 20, uh, 20, clip 20. In all of candor, you and your husband are part of the 1%. How can you credibly represent the views of the middle class? Well, you know, both Bill and I have been very blessed. Uh, neither of us came go. from wealthy families, and we've worked oh, really God. hard our entire lives. And neither did Al Capone. I want to make sure every single person in this country has the same opportunities that he and I have had to make the most of their God-given potential Yay. and to have right, the you chances get the that... The audience was stocked with a bunch of stupid women in there with the, the clapping every two minutes. I don't appreciate the clapping, the clapping crowd. Which would, you know, she didn't answer the question. Anderson Cooper did his best. He said, you and your husband, Bill Clinton, are part of the 1%. How can you credibly represent the views of the middle class? Right? She goes into the standard stump heat. I don't know why they said she was such a great speaker, won the debate. She won nothing. She was the same facile liar she's always been. What do you mean that she won? What did she win? You mean compared to the others she won? No. Jim Webb won. That's who won. He was the only man on the stage who amounted to anything. He was real, he was honest, and he said the right things. So here we go now to class warfare. We went from uh, uh, economic warfare in Hillary's mouth. Now we go to class warfare again with none other than uh, Senator Larry Sanders in, in racism in clip 22. My question for the candidates is, do black lives matter or do all lives matter? The question from Arthur in Des Moines <laughs> well, is, we go. do black lives matter or do all lives matter? Let's put that question to Senator Sanders. Black lives matter. And the reason, the reason those words matter is the African-American community knows. 
that on any given day, some innocent person like Sandra Bland can get into a car, and then three days later, she's going to end up dead in jail. Or their kids are going to get shot. Oh, you low life. We you need hateful. to combat yeah, institutional... I can't listen to him. I'm sorry. If he was at a party, I was out to throw him out of the door. He's the type that people would throw out, of, throw out of a house. They'd throw him out of a family. They would disown him. It was a stinker. No one would like anyone like him. Don't get me started because there's a lot more I'd like to say about him. You know, I laugh about him. He's an evil, dangerous, low-life demagogue from Brooklyn. If he was from the Bronx, I'd say otherwise. But he's from Brooklyn. That's why I say that. Savage tweets of socialist debate rule. All my tweets are on michaelsavage.com. You now know how to reach me on Facebook. It was supposed to be on my website by now. I don't know where it is. People want to know how to get me on Facebook. I asked to have it posted. I don't know where it went. See the entire catalog at the store. I don't know. I just got into this. It's like not that important to me. And secondly, if I do a lot of Facebook, it means I'm supporting Mark, whatever his name is. I forget his name. Who's the guy who owns Facebook? The guy who wants illegal aliens? I don't remember. Whatever. It's enjoyable. Okay, likes, dislikes. I see people spend their whole life... Uh, on Facebook. I was never on it. I had other people once in a while would put something up for me. Now that I'm on it, I have a picture with me in the car with the dog I like. Then the book is up there now. Then we have the Navy Dancing Girls. San Francisco Fleet Week is up there now. 3,201 people reach. They don't work for a living. They have nothing to do but look on Facebook and answer. And then there's a picture of Teddy and me that 17,000 people likes. It shows that dogs sell more than dancing girls, at least in my audience on Facebook. And uh, 855 how many do I have likes, no likes, post reaction? I guess people do this and they actually live on this thing. How many people react and don't react and do like them and don't like them? It becomes a virtual world. I can see what happens. You start saying, how many answered, how many people responded? How fast did they respond? Did they like me? Is anyone inviting me out on a date? Should I get a new suit? Do I need a talk? Uh, you see, I'm just joking today. Here's someone who likes me. Look at this. Michael Savage, you're just too cute. No, the picture was of Teddy, not of me. Sometimes when I'm walking the dog, uh, people say, they don't know me, they don't, but they look at the dog and, oh, isn't he cute? So for fun, I'll turn, if it's a woman, I'll say, you're talking about me or the dog. It's a funny line. It's cute. It's harmless. It really is. I don't mind. I don't mind playing with life. Life can be innocent and fun, you know. So let's go to the callers of the Savage Nation Minute Return, or I'll do a... I can't do Bernie anymore. I, the, the salt and pepper shrimp already was digested. The blood sugar went from the, from the head right to the stomach, thank God, because all of my OCD is gone now. It was all low blood sugar before. You, you ever get a thing where you can't get a song out of your head? It was going on all morning. I was really frightened. I was going to call a therapist. There was a song I couldn't get out of my head. I wasn't even singing it. I don't know where it came from. I don't even play certain rock and roll anymore on my show because the song gets in my head. I can't get it out. I'm in the toilet, the song. I'm taking a shower, the song. I'm on a bike ride, the song. And I say, this is worrisome. I don't know what to do. It's like a bee flying around in my head. But this was worse. It was a thought. And it wasn't a dangerous thought, but it was repetitive. Around and around and around. It was like banging around in my head. I said, this is bad. I can't stop it. I don't know what to do. I don't know how to end it. So I had a big lunch and it went away. Shows you I was starving. I'll be back. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. The Savage Nation is sponsored by Swiss America, the only company I trust with my financial future. Call 800-289-2646 or SwissAmerica.com. It is the Savage Nation. Let's go to the calls immediately. Time is short. Line six, go ahead, please. What's on your mind, sir? I have a question for Bernie Sanders. Yes, what is it? I need to know what is the difference between a Democrat, socialist, and a progressive liberal. And for Christ's sake, why did you go soft on the Second Amendment? Why did you let Hillary Clinton make you go soft? You used to be a supporter of the Second Amendment. I don't understand. Well, we'll answer your first question first, because the second one is a little antagonistic, frankly. The first question is, what's the difference between a progressive and a socialist, I think? It's very simple. Very, very simple. Socialist believes in taking what is rightfully the possession of those who worked for it and taking it and giving it to the bums in society, the losers and the stupid. That simply is what socialism is. A progressive, on the other hand, not only wants to take income from those who worked for it and give it to the losers and the dummies, but they want to shoot them as well. Now, what was the second question? Uh, um. <laughs> Why, why did you go soft on the Second Amendment? You let Hillary Clinton 
make you switch your stance. You have been Sorry, I, I personally, I personally find that very offensive. I did not go soft on anything that implies I am impotent. I will tell you right now, I do not use Viagra. I do not use any sexual enhancement pill whatsoever. I have not had sex in the last hundred and fifty years. Number two, but that is aside from the fact. The fact is, I did not go soft on the Second Amendment. I come from a rural state of Vermont where many, many people hunt. Many people have hunting rifles. I myself don't. I have never shot a BB gun. In fact, when I hear a hunting rifle go off, I have to call my psychiatrist or 911. But that is my personal belief, my personal fears, because I am from Brooklyn. And the gun to me was always a dangerous thing to the people that elected me, the morons in Vermont who fell for the shtick that I give. Okay, I got to throw them a bone. So I talk about guns as though they matter. I hate them all. I think they should take them and throw them in the, in the, in the ocean. But I can't say it. They throw me out of the Senate. Any other questions? Thank you for the call. Uh, not bad. Come on. It's wearing out a little bit, but I still enjoy it very much. Robert, is it still playing? My, my staff likes it. I'm entertaining them. Robert and Jim are suffering in Dallas. I see them on a Skype screen. And uh, it, it can't be that bad if I make them laugh every once in a while. You know, we need to lighten this up a bit, don't you think so? We need to lighten it up. How much can we take of this? These are not the best and the brightest people except for Jim Webb. Lincoln Chafee, I have no idea what funeral he just walked in from. If I were casting a funeral in a comedy, like a, a, a light comedy, Lincoln Chafee would play the, either the, a pallbearer or the funeral homeowner. You put a lot of white makeup on him, you could do a Frankenstein with Link, Lincoln Chafee. Hillary Clinton, as I said, if you, I did a yardage estimate on the pantsuit. If you laid the fabric out on a table, it would make at least three burkas for an average heavy, heavy woman. Eight years ago, I was one of the many candidates sharing my vision for our country's future. And after a hard-fought primary, we came together and built a historic grassroots campaign to bring change to America. Is that music? Together, we enacted the historic Wall Street did I go reform mad just to protect now? consumers and prevent Am I hearing crisis. that or is it in it? Together, we've changed the way we use energy and the way our schools prepare our kids. If I start hearing that without anything together, we playing, I'm checking health myself in. And another 16 million Americans now what? have the peace of mind of health insurance. Together, we've stood up for this justice a mad man. and equality. A a and the freedom to marry is now open to all. That's all so that we're matters. Gonna have to fight. Freedom to marry. Just as hard in this election as we did in the last two. It's sickening. No matter who's on the ballot next November, that's the choice we're going to face. Whichever communist still fired up, wins the uh, still nomination, you should support. I'm not support. just asking you to work as hard for our party as you did back in 2008 or 2012. Right, I'm right, asking right. you to work even harder. You hear the Knock whisper part? Him Knock and Michelle developed that. Give the whisper. Even more than you thought you could. Get. I've tried if it myself. That, I wonder if it... I know the Democrats won't just win the White House and Congress and elections all the way down the ticket. We'll keep building on the extraordinary progress of the past several years. And we'll leave our kids in America that's better than ever. Thanks, everybody. Better than ever. Look how good he's done. Middle East is on fire. He's created a cold war, almost a shooting war with Russia. Uh, everywhere you turn, Israel's in turmoil. People are being stabbed to death in the streets. And this schmuck is up there talking about global warming. And that schmuck's up there talking about the uh, income inequality. And the other moron is up there talking about marriage equality. The other idiot is talking about income redistribution. Yeah, go vote for a Democrat, you idiot, you. I'm asking you to work even harder and that the Democrats won't, won't just win the White House and Congress and elections all the way down the ticket. I thought he was going to then say, and we'll incarcerate everyone who didn't vote for us. I thought that was going to be the next part of the sentence. Okay, let's move on. Last night was quite an experience. No wonder I woke up with a migraine. Uh, oh, here's the Department of Homeland Security with the genius, Mr. Jed Johnson, when he was asked about the Syrians that are flooding into America, the Muslims. He admits he doesn't know who they are. Listen to clip 28 and see if you sleep better tonight. We have committed to resettling 10,000 Syrian refugees in fiscal year 16. Um, and we're looking at more for fiscal year 17. Really? At the end of, by the end of 15, we will have resettled approximately 2,000. So we want to do more. We believe we need to do more. Uh, but it is a time-consuming process, and one of the challenges we will have is that we're not going to we're not going to know a whole lot about the individual refugees that come forward from the UN High Commission on Refugees for for resettlement and and vetting. So it will be a challenge. This is who Obama picked to run the Department of Homeland Security: an unknown man, 
a lawyer, a lobbyist, who admits he doesn't